Hello and welcome everyone, Fog here. In this video, we'll talk about licenses that are underused or that do not feel like they get enough games. So just to be clear, I won't talk about dead licenses here, but more about licenses that are in my opinion underused and deserving much more spotlight. Those can have few recent games or none in the last 5 years or so. What I mean by dead licenses is licenses that didn't see a new game release in more or less 10 years. Some of those won't stay dead forever, like Onimusha that had leaks about a new game, but it won't be included here because outside of Arimaster there was nothing for more than 10 years. So it is considered their dead for this list. Also, for those games to be recognized as license, we say there should be at least two games with the license name, simply to make it more interesting and reduce the possibilities. I won't waste any more time, let's start with the first one. And the number 10, we'll talk about Nier. Nier is quite a complicated license, as it's a license linked to another license called Dragon Guard, a license that didn't see any games for more than 10 years nowadays, and with most of its game never ported, and a lot of themes inside the game that could be quite problematic nowadays. Where it's all complicated is that basically Nier is a follow-up to one of the five different possible endings of Dragon Guard 1. I mean, it's not every day that you have a license being created from an alternate ending of another license, but if there is something that characterizes Nier, it's his creator, Yoko Taro, that many people seem to love because of his very particular skill at making video games. Yoko Taro is often thinking outside the box, and making games that are darker with themes and scenarios that most writers do not delve into. Most of his games are dark and mature, but not dark and mature in a family-friendly way, like The Last of Us Will Do. No, more like the kind of stories you'd see in thrillers and horror movies where a character will eat another one. Yoko Taro can make mature stories, and that's what Dragon Guard and Nier are all about, and why they are so beloved. And that's why I believe Nier as a license deserve more games. There is also the fact that Nier Automata is extremely popular nowadays, as it has a pretty good scenario, as well as some other impressive assets. I have to say though that I'm personally not very fond of this license, but I love video games, and I believe every new Nier title with the same quality as the two major ones will always be a good thing for all the gamers out there. And as if we can hope for a sequel in the future, Yoko Taro recently said in an interview that as long as he lives, so will Nier. So we can only hope that he'll live the longest life possible and that Square Enix decide to make something out of the license. As a number 9, we have Dishonored. Dishonored is a license of first-person action games developed by Arkane Studios that was created back in 2012, while Dishonored Death of the Outsider, the last game of the license, was released in 2017, which is quite a while ago. Dishonored is mostly well known for the way it let the player decide if he should kill his enemies or spare them, with the consequences of whatever choice he ended up taking. Killing many enemies will lead to the chaos running rampant in the city and to a bad ending while playing it more stealthily will drown to the good ending and avoid the city to burn to ashes. Outside of this, the player will have access to several powers, like blinking, which allow you to teleport from one spot to another, and summoning rats that eat enemies alive, for example. Nowadays, Arkane Studios were working on Deathloop, a FPS with a lot of mechanics from Dishonored integrated in it, mostly the powers. And more recently, Redfall, that I do not know well, but seemed to me to be having the same kind of powers as well. So, can we hope for finally a Dishonored 3? Well, I do not think there was any news about it, but with how Redfall flopped, I believe Arkane might be inclined to come back to Dishonored to redeem themselves sometime in the future. But rumors tend to be saying they are working on a new IP, so we cannot really know if it's gonna happen, and if it happens, when it will. As a number 8, we have Ratchet and Clank. When I was younger, I used to own a PS2, and Ratchet and Clank was the very first game I've owned on it, so this license sort of have an emotional value for me. Those games were developed by Insomniac Games, that is famous for their recent Spider-Man game, or their very old Spyro the Dragon. Ratchet and Clank is a third-person platformer with the possibility to use firearms that you will loot or purchase after collecting bolts as exchange money. There was an insane amount of games released during the PS2 era and a few more during the PS3, and after that, one on the PS4 and one on the PS5. 
The reason is simple, and the same as every other licenses. Time to develop games is now taking longer, because of graphics mostly. But another reason is simply that Insomniac Games is a much bigger studio than they were back then. They now have many big games to deal with. They are in charge of the Spider-Man IP for Sony, but also the incoming Wolverine game, and unfortunately for Ratchet and Clank lovers, those IP are much more lucrative, and will probably always be kept in front of Ratchet and Clank from now on, so we can make Maybe expect one game from time to time, but the golden age of a game every few years is definitely gone for that one. It still remains better than the fate Jack and Daxter and Sly Raccoon ended up having though. For the number 7 we have Crash Bandicoot. If you do not know Crash, it used to basically be the mascot of Sony, more or less, with a tons of platforming games, but also spin-off, a bit like what Nintendo do with Mario, but cheaper. Crash is now owned by Microsoft, and was for a very long time completely forgotten, until they remastered the original trilogy, and now it's back to getting games again. I'll admit easily that Crash had over the years a few games that could be considered not that great by many, but as I grew up and played with those games during my teenager's years, I always kept a warm feeling toward them, maybe nostalgia. And that's why I put Crash in this list. I simply miss the old era of having Crash games released every year or two and especially being available on the console I'm playing, as they did not even bother to port the Crash Team Racing or Crash Team Rumble on PC. As if we can expect more Crash games, I'm pretty sure Microsoft is gonna try to use Crash, as it's a big name and was once a Sony exclusive, but hoping for more than one game every two years, as it was the case recently, seems a bit too ambitious, as I think the license is simply not making the amount of money that big publishers desire. Now for the number 6, Deus Ex. Deus Ex is one of those licenses that everybody wants to see coming back, but it never seems like there is any news about it. The last Deus Ex game was released in 2016, and because of apparently bad sales, had its sequel cancelled. The game was also loaded with microtransactions that didn't really appeal to the player base, if my memory serves me well. In case you're not familiar with Deus Ex, it is a series of first-person shooter RPG with a lot of stealth elements and choices. Deus Ex first of its name is also considered by many people as the best PC game ever made, and while the games following were not of that caliber, we are not talking about bad games either. Recently, Deus Ex escaped the grip of Square Enix, and the rights to the license are in the hand of THQ Nordic, but with the recent news about all the layoffs, where over 900 people lost their jobs, and the announced cancellation of 15 games, which presumably include games such as Time Splitters, Deus Ex doesn't seem to be out of the wood yet, but if the license and studio end up surviving this, we can definitely hope to see a Deus Ex in the future, in my opinion. Which is as good as nothing, but you have it. Now the number 5 is... Mega Man. Mega Man is one of the longest running video game franchise. I'd call it hardcore platforming, but as those games are hard as nail. It takes a lot of skill and patience to be able to beat a Mega Man game, and it's not something everyone can easily do. But those games also have quite a big fan base. Most of the recent releases outside of Eleven have been ports, which is great too, as it allows us to play older games on new systems. But Mega Man 12 is long overdue. I believe remembering something about Mega Man in a confirmed leak a few years ago, but we still didn't see anything about it. Maybe we can hope for a new Mega Man in a year or two, or maybe it was simply an announcement for one of those many collections that has since then been released. One thing is sure, Mega Man needs to come back. Now, as the number 4 we have, Danganronpa. The Danganronpa license is many things at once. The best I could describe is a visual novel detective game, but it's not entirely a visual novel either. Or maybe it is, but it shouldn't deter people that dislike visual novel from giving it a try, because it is really one of a kind. This license didn't see any proper mainline title since 2017, but had some kind of spin-off eventually released in 2021. Danganronpa 3 was supposed to be the last game from as far as I know, but this license really deserves more than this, and that's why it is on this list. I believe another game for the license would be eventually possible, but I doubt we'll get many more unfortunately, probably because it takes a lot of effort to create one, as it's really story intensive, just a guess there. 
Now as number 3 we have Blizz Blue. First and probably last fighting game series we'll talk about in this video, Blizz Blue is basically the sister series of the more well-known Guilty Gear and also mother series of X Blaze that are visual novels about the world of Blaze Blue or something like this. If there is one thing to know about Blaze Blue, it's that the story is overly complicated and that it probably will give you a headache if you try to read about it. There is some interesting parts, but it takes its sweet time, let's say. Blaze Blue is overall much simpler graphically wise than Guilty Gear, but it has some great designs. It all remains a matter of taste though. As for the gameplay, I'm not gonna try to tell you that I'm a pro at fighting games and can tell which game is better from another outside of the player base that do 90% of the jobs for those games anyway. But in that domain, Blaze Blue isn't the best but certainly not the worst, as there is quite a lot of people enjoying a lot its gameplay. The last fighting game of the license ended up being a crossover released in 2018, but before that, there was Blaze Blue Central Fiction released in 2016, that was the last mainline title released. The Blaze Blue license was also host of many mobile games, with one releasing on PC in 2023, but with a gameplay completely different. Overall, a new Blaze Blue wouldn't hurt. Now for the number 2 we have... Darksiders. Darksiders is a mostly action RPG, hack and slash license about the four horsemen of the apocalypse. There is currently three games and one spin-off. Each game have a different horseman as a protagonist. The story takes place on post-apocalyptic hearth, where demons and angels are fighting and you're basically there to bring balance in the middle of that. The gameplay on those games can differ from one another. Basically, the two first games of the license look and feel very much like PS3 games, while Darksiders 3 was updated and Darksiders Genesis is a completely different game altogether, with top-down view instead of third person. Darksiders is a license under the banner of THQ Nordic and risks to face the same problems as Deus Ex, which is basically layoffs and console games. I believe the universe of Darksiders is underused and could basically receive more mainline games and spin off very easily. There is a lot of possibilities for the license, which is why it is in this list. I also believe a fourth mainline title is in development and I doubt it will be or has been cancelled, but we never know. As for the number one we have... Brigandine. Brigandine is a license of turn-based strategy game, based on fictional world where you'll pick your side, form an army of human commanders and mythological beasts like dragons and many others, with the goal to conquer the castles of other nations. The very first Brigandine is I believe still stuck on the PS1, as for the second game, it was released a few years ago on the Switch, PC and PS4. With a 20 years gap between those two games, I think a few more wouldn't hurt. It's also quite unique, and few Japanese games play similarly to this one. They can also port the first game as well, while they are at it. For those still watching, I'll add a last one that I feel deserve more games, either spin-off or mainline. And it will be the Kao de Kangaroo license. It's a Polish license, and that's another platformer very similar to Crash and Ratchet. Kinda. It's also a game like Brigandine that had a very recent resurgence, and that maybe struggle more than it should. Overall, I believe K.O. is more likely to get a sequel than Brigandine, as Brigandine is a really awkward game that had a mysterious sequel 20 years after, and I wish we could see more of it. We are now at the end of this video, thank you for watching, have a good day, and take care folks, see you in next video.